In ES6, we have new functions and a simplified syntax to manipulate objects. Hello, my name is Shadow Temple and this is Temple Coding. I'm going to start talking about a simplified syntax when creating object literals. Let's say we have two variables, first name and last name. If I wanted to create an object with two properties having the same names, first name and last name, in ES5, I will do this. Now, in ES6, we can omit the second part of the, of the attribution. We just need to use the variable names. If you'd like to add a function using ES5 syntax, we will do something like this. Now using ES6, we can simplify it. First, we don't need the function keyword, and we can also remove the comma. When we needed a computed property key in ES5, we had to call the already constructed object and use brackets, like this. Now, we can do it directly when creating the object literal. That's fine for object literals. Now let's talk about some of the new functions for dealing with objects. Let's start with the functions for iterating over property keys of an object. Take this movie object as an example. The movie object has four properties, and despite the fact they are written in different ways, they are all string keys. What I mean by that is that in the end, name, year, genre and rating are all keys of the object movie and they are all of the type string. That's important because now in ES6 we can have keys of type string and keys of type symbol. I'm not getting into what symbols are in this video. Just know that symbol is a new data type in JavaScript and we can use them as keys in object like this. I'm probably going to do a video about what symbols are and what is their purpose, but for now, let's focus on the new functions for objects. The first one I'm going to talk about is object.keys. Object.keys takes an object as its parameter, and it will return an array of all the property keys that are strings. So, if I iterate over its result, we can log all its property keys. Note that the key property that is a symbol was not logged, but all the other ones were, and it's important to know that only the properties of the defined object will be shown. If the object inherited from another object, the properties of the parent object would not be shown. As an example, let me paste some code here. In this code, I create an object called Star Wars, with a property called Writer. Then, I create a second object called Movie using object.create. What object.create does is, it creates a new object, and this new object will inherit all properties and functions from the object passed as an argument. So, because I passed the Star Wars object as an argument, the movie object has the property writer as we can see if I show its value in the console. But if I try to log all the keys from the movie object using object.keys, nothing will be shown in the console. That's because the writer property does not belong to the movie object, it's just that the movie object inherits it. So, for now on, when I say that only the property of the object is shown, that's what I mean, ok? Ok, back to the object functions. So, object.keys does not return the keys for symbols. And what if you'd like that? Well, then we can use the object.getOnPropertySymbols function. The object.getOnPropertySymbols will return an array with all the keys that are symbols, and as with object.keys, it's only the own keys of the object, inherited properties will not be considered. What if we wanted both, strings and symbols? Well, then we can use the reflect.onKeys function. Until now, I've been running all code examples using just node.js, and reflect is not yet implemented in node.js. 
So I'm going to use Firefox to demonstrate how Reflect works. But if you are using a transpiler such as Babel, it should work and you, you should not worry about it. As you can see, the last property shown is a symbol. So the result of reflect.onKeys are all the string value key properties and symbols. Again, the reflect.onKeys will not return inherited properties. Ok, moving on. Another very simple function is object.is. Object.is is a function that compares two values. So object.is 1, 1 will return true. Nothing new here. What is important to know is that this comparison is made by using the triple equals that is same as doing this. Why is this important? Well, I guess you know by now that if you use only two equals, JavaScript will try to convert the two values being compared to a same common type. So, if I try to compare the number 1 and a string containing the text 1, using only two equals, the comparison will return true. But if I use the triple equals, it will return false. That's because in this case, JavaScript is just comparing the two values. Well, object.is always uses the triple equals. Then you might ask, why use object.is when I can use the triple equals? Well, that's because object.is solves two problems. The first one is about not your number. If you use the triple equals to compare not your number to not your number, will get false as a result. That may not be what you expected, so if you use the object.is, you would receive the expected result that is true. The second case is that JavaScript has two different zeros, the minus zero and the plus zero. They are different values and as such, one would expect that a comparison between the two values will result in false. That's not the case when using the triple equals which is not correct when you use object.is to compare both values. The last function I want to talk about is the object.assign. This function will merge properties from different sources into a target object. So let's say I have an object called source, and I want to merge its properties with the ones of an object called target. The result of all this will be a new object called merged. What happened here is that the properties of the object source were merged with the properties of the object target, and all of these generated a new object. If I had a new object called source2 with a prop3 and a value3, I could merge all of these three objects and have just one as a result. What is important to understand is that properties are merged from right to left. If a property with the same name already exists in the object on the left, the value of the object on the right is the value that will be returned. So let's use an example with more meaningful names to be clear. What we have here is a movie object with the title Star Wars A New Hope and another object called New Movie with the title Star Wars The Force Awakens. When I run this code, we can see that what we was logged as title was Star Wars The Force Awakens, and that's because the object.assign function was called with new movie on the right on the movie object. And because the new movie object does not have a year property, we're logging 1977 as the value of the year, because that's the value of the movie object that was not replaced. Object.assign is great for defining the full values for objects received as parameters. Let's say I have a function that receives an object as a parameter. If I want to make sure that the options object always have a default value for a property URL, I can do that by defining an object with a default value. Then I can call object.assign before using the options object. And if I pass an object with the URL property, that will take precedence. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.